All right, welcome everybody. This is gonna be my review for The Occupant 2020 streaming on Netflix right now. So this movie starts with an advertisement, which is quite fitting. And we've all seen this type of advertisement before. They're a classic. It's the perfect family living in a nice neighborhood inside a perfect home. You know, dad gets home from work, kisses his wife, hugs his kid, dinner is just ready, and he reaches inside the fridge for which this advertisement was created to pull out to pull out a fresh salad, right? So the advertisement ends with the life you deserve. So it's sort of very glamorous for what is essentially just a commercial for a refrigerator. But this is where our story starts. So Javier Munoz is a once proud advertising, uh, advertising executive who is sort of like at his wit's end, right? It's been a year of unemployment. He's being interviewed by like two people that are way younger than him. And he's just shown them, you know, this famous advertisement that he just did. And they're even applauding him because this is like a classic, you know, marketing advertisement 101. But as they're talking to him and they're applauding this advertisement, they're making comments about how long ago this, this was released. You know, they're saying like, oh, hey, do you remember? I must have been like 12 years old. How old were you? I was like 11 years old. And they're kind of chuckling back and forth. And this is going to be a, a continuing theme throughout this movie, right? It's sort of the old executive and sort of out of a job now and still trying to find his place in this market that's become so much younger and even though he's only middle aged he's being made to feel ancient right now so needless to say this interview does does not go well and neither do any of the subsequent interviews in this movie and he has uh, you know various interviews and this guy's a legend you have to understand like the he was the greatest well maybe not the greatest but one of the best in his field and people know him. So advertisement is this guy's thing. He lives, breathes, and he believes it too. This is the way he views the world. Advertisements all show us this picturesque, only the good things. It teaches you that if you have buy this, you have this, you'll have status, influence, happiness. And you know, Javier really only views the world this way. He believes in his fancy apartment and his fancy BMW and his amazing life and he's an executive and he dresses in nice suits and he's in business meetings all the time and his family is sort of secondary to that but as I said this is after a year of unemployment and clearly some things are gonna have to change so he gets home after this interview and he's talking with his wife and his wife is sort of well, not sort of, she's very understanding. Like she is fine with a downgrade in life. She genuinely loves him. And so does his son too, even though his son's being uh, bullied by his classmates because they know that his dad is out of a job and they're gonna have to move. So being forced to move out of his great apartment, which he loves, he moves into like this really blue collar like working class neighborhood with like much more humble furnishings and a faucet that drips constantly and this will be a little bit important or maybe a lot important later and he becomes obsessed with his old life so it comes to the point where he's even taking like night drives and day drives out to his old apartment because he's still obsessed with that lifestyle He's still obsessed with that life that he had. And uh, he starts stalking the new family that lives there, that has moved into his old apartment. So he parks his you know, BMW, which he should totally sell because he can't afford it. And he's sort of like stalking these people, watching what they do on the balcony. And this is sort of a really good shot in this movie because he's sort of at the bottom now and they're at the top. and they look down on people and he's looking up at them and just sort of fantasizing about getting back there but this 
stalker style behavior is like it starts to get stronger every time like he goes to this apartment to this spot several times to the point where upon remembering that he still has like his old keys he starts to break in there again and to the point where you know he pours himself a drink he uses the bathroom <laughs> you know he's like super super obsessed and he even goes on uh the patriarch's uh, computer right so he realizes that he has a drinking problem right uh this new younger richer family man that has the life that he wants and that he used to have is an alcoholic or was an alcoholic to the point where he got into a car crash that almost killed him uh his wife and his daughter right so he sees that he has these little uh, aa meeting uh, tokens right and he has several one day ones which means that he's relapsed several times so basically you start to see that he's becoming more and more obsessed with this man and how it sort of seems to us at this point in the story that he believes this new guy doesn't deserve that apartment he doesn't deserve the family he doesn't deserve the status right so before he leaves this apartment he goes out to this balcony the one that he was uh, stalking the family on previously and just like we've seen in shots before he's looking down on everybody from this majestic apartment sort of like a king looks over his kingdom and we can tell that he's very obsessed with this style of life and this movie is going to really hammer that point home and I believe it's one of the most interesting things that this movie has to tell because we're not only getting a thriller stalker drama we're also getting sort of a social commentary on social status and how we're never destined to really stay in the same place forever we all have to change and a lot of times that's for the worse we're all going to look back at somebody who's younger or, you know who is full of youth who has more opportunities who has more than what we had at that time and i think how we deal with that is going to be what's important because a lot of people look back on you know those times and they find this new person that's in the position that you were in years ago and that sparks a lot of jealousy so as he starts stalking this family more and more he fixates on this man and his name is thomas right as, as i've mentioned on the father of this family and it he sort of um comes up with this plan to go to his aa meetings even though he himself is not an alcoholic so he goes to this aa meeting to with the purpose of striking up a friendship with thomas right so he tells a story about how he got into a crash and almost killed his wife and daughter and he got a divorce though so this is how he sort of makes a connection with Thomas and they start to form what Thomas thinks is a friendship, right? So we continue this, they start to hang out, you know, they go for coffee after their AA meetings and he starts to uh, fixate more and more on Thomas's weaknesses, his character weaknesses. And Thomas, you know, innocently is trying to help him. So he's revealing all of his, these character flaws and all the things that he's done wrong so Javier doesn't make those mistakes because he thinks that Javier is this raging alcoholic right but that's not true this is only part of a plan that will start to unfold so Javier and Thomas become closer and closer and we experience we, we start to get a better picture of Javier's plans uh, Thomas is more and more uh, confiding in him it gets to the point where Thomas even starts to hold what he thinks are Javier's secrets. So Javier gets into a purposeful car crash. He calls Thomas, right, to come and get him. And then he finds Javier just passed out in the car with a bottle of gin. And Thomas tries to help him. And Javier pretends as, that it's an accident, but he spills a bunch of gin on Thomas. So when Thomas gets back to his home, his wife smells that and she thinks he's relapsed. So Javier is starting to pull these strings like a mastermind in order to really collapse Thomas's life. 
to the point where we're starting to see that he wants to like destroy him so right now i'll make a pause after this is pretty much going to be a bunch of spoilers so if you don't want the spoilers uh you can just kind of cut off here now if you've liked what you've heard and you've liked what you've you know thought about the premise of the movie overall i think this is a really solid movie it's the only flaw because it's well acted the cinematography is good the soundtrack is good everything's really tense and like surreal and like this movie is not it's not cookie cutter it's not full of these like tropes this is very realistic and it takes pride in that you know the the good guy doesn't necessarily win at the end and in fact i think that many people will agree that this is sort of a realistic take on a thriller but that being said this movie what i what i think that's bad about it is that and i try i'm trying not to punish it too hard for it is that it's kind of uninspired you know this movie if, if you've seen these 80s and 90s and early 2000s thrillers all this is is that but in 2020 like instead of um man falls in love with another woman uh because he just wants her and now he has to like kill his wife or vice versa in this web of cheating and lies this is that but with a lifestyle you know he, he becomes obsessed not with another woman he becomes obsessed with his old life he becomes obsessed with his old status and he wants to rip that away from someone because he feels that that person doesn't deserve it overall i recommend it it's really really good it's well acted um the two main characters javier and thomas just have just a great back and forth with each other this gets my seal of approval if that means anything to you um i give it a solid seven and i say that because we've all seen this movie before we've all seen this type of movie and if it was if it brought in more original concepts if maybe the supporting characters really weren't as bland as they are because make no mistake javier and thomas really carry this movie like the supporting characters are just that they're just there as filler you know they're little support themes to make sure that the story doesn't fall apart really they're just you know bouncing glasses for the two main characters to you know express their emotions off of but yeah um now we're getting into the spoilers so stop stop if you don't want spoilers that's it <laughs> you can go ahead and you know exit out of this one stop it because we're heading into the spoiler territory so all right javier's plan is to kill thomas which he does he sort of makes this web makes this plot and he puts uh peanut uh oil into a pepper spray that he gives to thomas's wife right so she convinces her that thomas is dangerous that he's gone back he's relapsed he's a raging alcoholic and he's gonna hurt them again you know just like he's done before and basically he gives her this pepper spray and she uses it on thomas once he comes back because he's made him relapse right and she uses it on him and he's collapsed on the floor because he's having a severe allergic reaction because he's allergic to peanuts which he confided in javier that and javier tells uh thomas's wife to go into the room take care of the take care of his daughter make sure that they don't see anything and he finishes killing thomas so this whole web has sort of been to steal thomas's life because he's done all these little things you know he's he's been hanging out with thomas he's uh created a friendship with his wife he's made her slowly think that thomas is violent and that he's relapsed and basically he finishes kill killing thomas he comforts wife and daughter he finishes sort of stealing them away he convinces uh her that it's all been this terrible accident and he gets away with it 
which is I think is one of the most brilliant points of this movie, right? So Javier has put status above all else. He literally leaves his former wife and child to take on this new life from a guy that he's killed, right? He kills this uh, this woman's husband to become her husband and to become his, you know, the stepdad to the daughter, which he killed her dad. And he is just going absolute, just stalker, full on psychopath, sociopath. And he is so Machiavellian when it comes to sort of getting what he wants, you know, because he's, he hates poverty. He hates living this way and he will stop at nothing, which is kind of another, you know, a kind of another negative. I didn't want to mention this uh, before the spoilers, but now I can. If Javier dedicated like half the effort to like being <laughs> at the top of his game still to like finding a job and being good at his job as he did with this whole <laughs> intertwining rep of like murder and mystery <laughs> and like deceit, he would be the world's greatest advertising executive. He would have never gotten fired, right? So that's kind of a negative, you know? But I thought, you know, the way that this movie ends, we get the final scene. He's living with his new wife and daughter. He's in this perfect house. He's at this business meeting where he's back to being an, an executive. And uh, his ex-wife shows up. And basically, she, she tells him that she's figured everything out. And he sort of tells her, like, hey, I made this trust fund for our son. And if you, you rat me out, I'm going to, you know, liquidate it all. And I'm going to use it to buy the best lawyers. So this man that sort of at the beginning is, is very, you know, a family man. He has a good job. And he's lost all that. And he's sort of given everything up to get his life back but simultaneously he's lost the most important things in his life and replaced them with something else because yes he has a new wife and he has a new daughter but he's killed someone else to have that and they're not really his he stole that so Thomas and Javier have a lot of the same issues they're both addicts in in some ways they're both obsessed about certain things but thomas was really doing the right thing before javier came along after the accident he was a great husband great father um he had a good job you know he was holding down that job and of course he had problems but he was sticking to it he had a year of sobriety straight even though he had relapsed several times before so there's this sort of you know, there's this back and forth between them and how their characters interact where they're very similar, but they're completely the opposite. Javier gave up everything to have everything in his mind. So the final scene, he's in this beautiful house, beautiful home, beautiful wife, beautiful daughter. You know, he gives his wife a kiss, you know, he says, you know, he's talking with his daughter for a second. So they leave. Last few seconds, he looks out at this great view like a king over his kingdom. The life he deserves. And then in the background, his faucet, in this beautiful home and this perfect faucet, starts to drip. Which sort of, to me, signified that it's, he's still going to have that same dripping faucet forever. You know, in that same torn down apartment that he had to move to in that blue collar neighborhood with that awful faucet that wouldn't stop dripping. He has to live with that now, too. You know, this won't last forever. There's choices that he made and he couldn't get back on his feet, really, without resorting to this. And I think this is the way of the movie sort of telling us that he'll never be free of that. You know, I think that eventually it'll all fall apart for him. Just like even in that beautiful, perfect home, he still has to deal with that leaking faucet that was just driving him insane.
So guys, um, I hope this gives you a good idea of the movie. I was I enjoyed this movie at like a nine, but I can't give it a nine because it is a bit uninspired. The supporting characters really are not there, if we can even call them that. They're just sort of there to hold the structure together. Uh, I really like the atmosphere. The two main characters I, I thought gave really good performances. And the story was, like I said, unimaginative, but it was very well done. Even though we've seen this movie before, we've seen it worse most of the time. And this was one of the better ones. So peace out, guys. Have a good one. Uh, if you see it, uh, let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Peace out. Bye.